In this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know to stay safe whilst riding a scooter in Bali. This video is gonna be in two parts. The first part, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know before you actually get on a scooter and drive these crazy roads in Bali. And in part two, I'm gonna give you my best tips and tricks for when you actually hit the road. The reality is the riding conditions in Bali are quite tricky. It's very busy for a start and the condition of the roads are not great. If you've never ridden a scooter before, this probably isn't the perfect place to learn. And if you are a first timer, I definitely recommend getting some lessons or in the very least, riding on the back of a Gojek for maybe the first few days just to get some familiarity with how it all works here. And once you do get your bike, I would avoid central Changu, central Ubud and Denpasar at least until you've built some confidence. One other factor to consider is the condition of the bike that you're gonna get. I would say get something that's no more than a couple of years old and hasn't done too many miles and you can stipulate that when you rent the bike. Always wear a helmet when you're in Bali for two reasons, one for safety in case you have an accident and two to avoid fines because you're guaranteed that you will get stopped at a police checkpoint if you or a passenger hasn't got a helmet on. Make sure you pack a raincoat or poncho because you can guarantee with the weather in Bali at some point you are going to get caught out. If you're going on a long journey, you definitely want to hook up Google Maps. So get them linked up via Bluetooth into your earphones. And what I would say is because of the traffic in Bali, Google rarely gets it right. So add about 25 to 30 percent uh, to your journey time. One other thing to bear in mind is Google will send you the wrong way at some point. So just roll with it, let it redirect you and carry on. And the final thing is make sure you set your mirrors correctly. Your awareness is super, super crucial in Bali because of the amount of traffic. So set your mirrors correctly and check your blind spots before you do any turns or um, any movements in general. So once you're ready to hit the road, my recommendation would be just to start really slow and adopt a defensive driving style. Follow the locals and I think one of the biggest things to remember is no sudden movement so you know wherever whatever direction you're going if you just drift out slowly then you know anybody that's behind you can accommodate where you're most likely to have an accident is if you just suddenly zip out um, and then someone's overtaking you and yeah you can imagine what can happen then you may be used to doing things a certain way um, back wherever you're from um, but those rules are most likely not going to apply here for example undertaking is quite normal uh, when you turn right you don't necessarily go past someone and then uh, turn in you can it's kind of a free-for-all when you're turning right the central lane dividers uh, are not adhered to so you need to be aware that if you're near the center of the road then people may well be cutting out and overtaking on the other side and you're expected to kind of have that awareness that someone could be coming the other way a couple of other things to be aware of will just pull out on you um, so you need to have that awareness that to keep an eye on your left hand side for people pulling out and they may well not use indicators if someone's pulling in and off the road um, don't follow too closely and be aware of the fact that the brake lights might not work and they may well not be indicated you just need to accommodate for that as you're riding despite that when you're about to turn you definitely want to use your indicators and you also want to use your um, hand signal as well so stick your arm out and sort of flap it around to let someone know that you're turning in something else to bear in mind is the sidewalks or pedestrian walks as we would know them aren't actually for pedestrians uh, it would appear they tend to be over spills for when the traffic's busy that the bikes will go up onto the curbs so i'm going to wrap this video up with a final few pointers if you're on the bike and you're coming across tricky sections where the, there's gravel or undulating ground just put your feet down either side of the bike and a couple of inches up off the ground just to give you that security that if the bike does slip that you can put your feet down and stop yourself falling off the bike the beeper or the horn is used quite a lot over here it's used to let you know that someone's going to overtake you or if you're at a cross junction um, just to give you that awareness that someone's coming so I've had a look through the GoPro footage and I found a couple of more clips that could be useful to you guys so 
One of them is if you're driving down the inside of the cars, just be mindful that in between the gap of the cars, other bikes may be wanting to get in. Another one is the oncoming traffic. You wouldn't normally expect to see people coming the wrong way, but it's pretty normal here that the locals will be coming up the wrong way. And then the other one is if you turn right, I tend to try and use other bikes or cars as blockers just to give you that assurance as you're pulling around. So despite the dangers of riding a bike in Bali, as you can see from the time-lapse footage, it's still by far and away the best way to get around in Bali. And you're going to save yourself a hell of a lot of time compared to if you're in a car. As you can see from this time-lapse footage of me riding the bike coming into Changu. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, please give the video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.